Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Group Chat. We are reporting live from each of our living rooms, balconies, and offices at home. We're playing it safe today, uh, but we still got a really good episode. I think the main thing is we got to just talk about, um, you know, the complete insurrection on the U.S. government. I mean, it's a good place to start. Mm -hmm. It's a great place to start. Okay, so let's talk about that. Let's go over everything that's happened since the actual storming of the Capitol. And then, uh, you know, there's a lot of other news and and stuff to talk about. So we'll get you all caught up to speed on uh, everything you need to know to start a brand new week. And if you're having a bad day, let me tell you, you are on more platforms than Donald Trump is. He's not even on Spotify anymore. He's on nothing. He's left to him and his OnlyFans. Yeah. All right. Let's get into it. Cash. Ladies and gentlemen, group chat. Cash. Cash. It's a trillion dollars. Hot. Cash. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, happy start of a new week. Welcome to a COVID safe group chat. We tightened up a little bit. Tightened up, zero risk. I mean, from what I hear, the ICUs in LA are a war zone and the group chat crew is taking zero risk. I prefer home, frankly. I'm a work from home guy now. Really? You 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 transitioned. <laughs> I want to work from home. I want everyone else to work in the office. Got it, got it, got it. Do you, are you you're working from home like pretty much all the time now, right? Yeah, the last week I really haven't. I've got, I went to the office I think once to pick something up, but I don't think I've gone in really since the Christmas Christmas break. Is that I mean, because of the the boost in cases, or what caused that? Yeah, it's definitely that. Just because, like, I know. I mean, our staff is young, and a lot of them traveled. A lot of them went all over. God knows, you know, they're okay. Maybe wiping out some family members, but I'm not. I'm not in that market. No. I will say I've been popping into the office this week and no one's there. So yeah. it's not work from home or work from office. No one's working. <laughs> yeah, work from home, work from office, don't work. I, not sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Check back in February. <laughs> um, okay, good. Well, this is the first time I had been at least going in uh, to be in the studio with Tim and be on the microphone. But you know what? Fuck it. I'm yeah. Here. Because I don't even trust him that much. He says he's home alone. I don't trust him. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so let's talk about everything going on. I mean, obviously, I think, um, well, now that the Kanye Jeffree Star news has sort of just blown over, I guess yeah. the most important thing now is the complete uh, uh, coup that, that was attempted on our government. Yeah. Um, here we are a few days later. Uh, and there was a lot of action. Like there was a lot of immediate, like obviously a lot of people are completely freaked out. A lot of Republicans changed their tone. Some didn't. Um, there's talks of impeachment. There's all these different things. What's kind of the general feeling for you guys? I mean, what are we, nine days? I don't even know now. Nine days away from uh, uh, Biden officially taking office. Um, how are we looking? So I think we should start with all the platforms that have banned or restricted Trump so far. Yeah, let's get a rundown. Are you ready? And on Reddit, uh, there's a subreddit group, Donald Trump, gone. gone. Twitch, he had a channel, Trump's channel, gone. gone. Shopify, online stores affiliated with Trump or his organization and his campaign's merchandise sites, Gone. Wow. Twitter, gone. Google has pulled, we'll get to Parler, but Google and YouTube, the Trump channel or any channel claiming voter fraud, gone. Gone. Facebook, obviously gone. Instagram, gone. Snapchat, gone. TikTok, anything, hashtag storm the Capitol, Patriot Party, gone. Even the Chinese. Yeah, even the Chinese have butt butt in. Chinese are like, man, this is too crazy. (laughs) You would think they would be like, we're going to amplify these messages. (laughs) Even they're like, no, we don't want to win like this. Obviously, Apple is going to be related to Parler, which we'll discuss shortly. 
uh, Discord. Uh, there's a server called the Donald Gun. Pinterest. Uh, there's a hashtag called Stop the Steal that was going on Pinterest. Gun. I mean, this guy is public enemy number one. It just shows you how quickly the tone changed. He's seven, eight, nine days, whatever it is, from being out of the presidency. It's a blue house, a blue Senate, blue presidency. They're like, finally, fuck this guy. He's out of here. So I, I want to start by first addressing all the fake libertarians on Twitter and Instagram that are saying this is an assault on our democracy to deplatform and the fake contrarians and all these people who don't want to just simply understand when you incite violence, you get deplatformed. And now that he's the outgoing president, there was a ruling in, I think in the 1960s, you can't shout fire in a movie theater. That is yeah. not against free speech. That is inciting a riot. Yeah. And that's what's going on. And I, I actually have a strong suspicion that this came from the intelligence agencies. And they were just like, the, it's the extreme right is just using these platforms to organize and cause and chaos. I mean, they stormed the Capitol building and their report while we were just on zoom getting set up, the FBI visited extreme groups before the protest because they were fearing what was going to happen on January 6th. Why are we visiting them? Arrest them. You don't visit terrorists and say like, Hey, stay away from the world trade center. Like that's not the conversation. Why are we treating this like with kid gloves? Yeah. Well, I think that's that's part of the challenge right now is that you are hearing so many people talk about free speech. Um, and if you say, well, these are private companies, they get to do whatever the hell they want, similar to what a restaurant can refuse the right to service anyone. And then you have a bunch of people saying, uh, screaming Section 230, which says platforms are um, not liable. of responsibility absorbable responsibilities. And here's the thing. Society evolves. Laws evolve. People evolve. Technology evolves. Is Section 230 completely accurate? No. We all know that that needs to evolve as well. No one's absolving, uh, in, my, in public opinion, of the platform's fault in this whole thing. We are saying that what Donald Trump did is so wrong. Here's the thing. If, you, if, if it was Osama bin Laden saying crazy shit on Twitter, we wouldn't allow it. We wouldn't have allowed it. it yeah. just, and, he, and then all of a sudden people go, you know, ram two planes inside of a, you know, uh, to the World Trade Center. We'd be okay with that? No, we would, we would first kick him off every platform and then we found him and kill him. And that's, what, that's, that's literally what we did. And whether you, he is the president of the United States, but what he did was incite a bunch of crazy people to travel around the country, show up in Washington, D.C., and storm the Capitol. And frankly, I'm more afraid for this week because they, they're cooking up something on January 19th. So, I mean, yeah. I, uh, 21st, you yeah. mean, right? For the, no, there's no, a, no. I, heard, I heard 17th. I think there's a few. Yeah, I think, there's I, a 19th. I, I don't think MAGA is necessarily the best at like planning, you know, getting their yeah. calendars, I think. But I think there's a few that are bubbling up. Well, and, and here's the big kicker is Parler, the app that we've been hyping up for a while as like the spot for right wing action. So all of a sudden, Google comes out first. Apple says we're reviewing whether they should be on the app store or not. Google comes, boom, first punch. We're off Android. Then Apple comes and says we're kicking them off the app store. Then this to me is the death blow. AWS, their host says, you're done. We're out. You can't be using us. So a Sunday night, they're getting turned off. They're saying by noon tomorrow, they'll find other servers. My guess is they'll find foreign servers. I'm sure Russia would love to host Parler. So I'm sure they'll find some foreign servers that will, uh, you know, do it. But you just see like society is done with this shit. Like, no one wants to see a guy wearing Camp Auschwitz storming the Capitol. Like, yeah, I think the, the biggest, like, benefit we've seen in the last 72 hours with all the platforms deplatforming these clowns is 
we're this is the first step to treating them like the terrorists that they are. Yeah, like these are terrorists, and yeah. I think the intelligence agencies are actually scared for the well-being of American society if we let them to bubble in these circles on platforms and give them millions and millions of ex, uh, of uh, views and exposure because obviously conspiracies and violent stuff resonates so it amplifies on the algorithm so it gets seen more um and i think it's a good first step and the fake libertarians you guys are the new woke in my opinion so confused you know what i i mentioned this before like i'm so confused because a lot of the people that are saying that are people that i think are really smart and I really like sort of li- listen to a lot for their judgment on things. And, and it's people on the left. It, it's not people on the right, but it makes zero sense to me. Like I couldn't possibly disagree more. And I, and it drives me nuts that I can't understand how any person would see this. To me, it's that to me, the left saying free speech and this is a slip, slippery slope is just as ignorant as how we complain about the right saying that, you know, background checks and a limit on firearms, it, it, taking that away is a slippery slope to them taking all your guns. Like, it sounds so stupid, and I'm so it, confused. Th- I think the the scariest people that are screaming it are people like Naval, who yes, has an enormous... David Sachs. Yes. David Sachs is, is a far right. Is, not far right. He's right. He's like... Yeah, yeah, no. I, I like, Naval, like... I don't know, man. I, I just, I still look at, even though he is right, I still look at these people as really good judgment people. For but David Sachs also this week said if the people who stormed the Capitol were black and brown, it would have been the same number of casualties, which is. Yeah, well, fuck David Sachs then maybe, maybe take his <laughs> yeah. name out of that. But, but it's yeah. the Naval and it's all the other people. I mean, literally, like, not that this is someone that I look to for, um, for uh, guidance, but um, Kelly Rowland posted it and it's getting a lot of like press in the like hip hop community and whatever. It's just like, I don't understand how any, I, I just don't get it. I wish someone would like explain it to me. I wish Naval, who's such a good talker and fucking podcaster would explain the argument. They can't. Like, because- I, I, I'm sorry, when people died, five people died, a, a police officer died, another police officer committed suicide on Saturday and from the Capitol, and we had four Americans just die because this moron it, it got these people riled up and caused this in, insane riot. And yes, people, obviously everyone's moving quickly on this and people all are, I think everyone accepts that this was the wrong thing to do. But I mean, it was just a, it was a catastrophe on the side of of storming the Capitol. But like, do you, I can't even believe this is in comparison to Black Lives Matter protests. Do you know why black people were protesting in in June? Because innocent black people were getting gunned down on the street because Mm -hmm. a man who maybe broke some petty crime gets arrested and killed. That is so different than these people are mad because their bitch ass president lost he, fair and square. Well, so if you, no, but if you want to, let, let's think about it differently. Because unfortunately, that group that came to DC and stormed the Capitol actually believes democracy was stolen from them. So in their mind, that's the same as George Floyd. Here's the difference: BLM did not take over the fucking Capitol. No. Nah. When so, when we were talking about rioting in in BLM conversations. There was a handful of cities, and L.A. was not one of them. I mean, what did we have really in L.A.? We had a couple, like, stores broken into. I mean, we didn't have, like, we didn't have Rodney King-style riots. The the reality is these people have been radicalized no different than the way ISIS radicalized these people. So the woman who died, who was the war vet who'd done four tours, like, she was radicalized. And, Yeah. yeah, she did serve our country and that's an amazing thing but she came home and got radicalized and that's the reason you have to de-platform people that incite violence and it's, like, it's so simple and 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 i think i think people on the right who aren't supporting the impeachment here's my thing i think mitch mcconnell and the powerful republicans they want to impeach him because the neck if the house impeaches him the senate then votes 
potentially disqualify him from any further elections. And yep. that is what they want to do. If I'm the head of the Republican Party and I care about power and money, I want Donald Trump gone forever because he just cost them everything. He made yep. them a laughing stock. So if I'm Mitch McConnell, I'm like, impeach this motherfucker. Let's get him out of here and let's rebuild our party. Because by the way, if Republicans have a half decent candidate, they're winning the next election. Half decent, not even great. They don't need a Barack Obama. They need a Mitt Romney and they're probably no, going to win. I honestly think it's the mayor of Miami. I'm telling you, I think he's going to run for president in 2024. Yeah, I mean, yeah, as long as you take some text message from a tech person, that is the low bar of being a Republican and becoming president. While we need the most perfect fucking people on the left to become president. You, you, you take a meeting with like four tech CEOs and you can become your yeah. potential candidate, but that's how desperate they are for anyone to re- to uh, yeah reflect conservative values in public office. They they just are so desperate because there's nobody, and Trump is literally the monopoly of the GOP. And I think Republicans are both scared and know they need him, which is why you see like Ted Cruz was spewing the same nonsense. Lindsey Graham, I I sent this video in one of our chats, D. Lindsey Graham was in the D.C. airport. Lindsey Graham, the guy who's been defending and espousing all of Trump's nonsense for four years and then finally said, hey, this is nonsense, like this violence at the Capitol. He got mobbed by pro-Trump supporters and he needed seven security guards, armed guards, to escort him through the D.C. airport while the mob was attacking him. These are terrorists. Yeah. And and yeah. and if, imagine if, imagine go to a DC airport. Imagine if that was and, and everyone hates when you do this. Imagine if that was fourteen black people coming up to a U.S. senator. I'm just sorry, it just would not be the same. And I'm going to keep bringing race up because it's not treated equally and it's not treated fairly. Like we need to completely. We need to kick them off all platforms. We need to silence Donald Trump because he has created so much division and hatred in this country. And the reason why we're in this situation while we're sitting at home and not be able to do anything is his fault. They're, half the countries are back to normal. We are not. So if you want to talk, if you want to blame COVID, you want to blame the mood, the division, the economy, everything is his fault. And I think on top of that, all the bullshit he's done and how many people have lost their lives and how many just, you know, it, the amount of like, I hate him so much and what he's done to the country. And frankly, it doesn't even affect me. It doesn't affect my life. And I hate him that much. So it's like, I understand why the average person, the average person, even if you're a Republican or a Democrat, you should be so angry that your life is this because of this president and we can't allow him to continue. I know people like to, uh, people don't like to even see the, the Hitler references, but like you got to put this fucker in his cage now, like done. We can't let this guy keep bubbling up. It is too dangerous for society for him to have a platform where he can bubble back up in four years and cause, cause, cause chaos in our country. We can't allow it. What else is really crazy is if you watch, there are some videos you know, like on Twitter and like different places of like what was really going on there. And it is nuts. And like nuts. the amount of people in like Q shirts and like, if you honestly, I know we've joked about it and Q on and all this stuff, which I'm still a big fan of Q on. <laughs> yeah. it, but it's like, if you really look at what these people believe, it's crazier than what some terrorists believe. Like it is crazy and they believe it about our own country and like one of the things that i saw and i'm not trying to take away from 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 anything or or the race element of this whole thing but one of the photos that went viral was a noose um outside the yeah. capitol building and a lot of people were saying like look at this like how blatantly racist can you be but just to show how absolutely insane these people are, when they were actually storming into the Capitol, they were all screaming, hang Mike Pence, hang yes. Mike Pence. And there's a, I, I don't know whether the news, I have no idea who put it there. I don't know if it was there for racist reasons, but there was a like, we need to get in there. People carrying zip ties, handcuffs, like we need to kill Nancy Pelosi and hang Mike Pence. Like they were legitimately there for that. And if you read what those people believe, it is like, 
way scarier than just like, oh, our president lost and we don't like it. So we're going to protest. Yes. Those people were there to stop a cabal of pedophilia, stealing. Donald Trump is there to save us. Like it is way crazier than, yes. you yeah, know. So what we just like, described is no different than what uh, someone in Syria gets radicalized about debt to the West. Like the yes. West is, West is uh, the enemy. Yeah, like, I would say in some ways it is scarier because it's more fairy tale. Like it's mm -hmm. more, it's, you know, if it's like, I don't know, once again, treading lightly, but like you live here. You live yeah. here. Oh, you're just in your mom's Go ahead. Sorry. You're just in your mom's fucking basement reading these stories and they legitimately are ready to go hang Mike Pence, who you were his biggest fan a week ago. But that's how quickly you get flipped because there is a group trying to stop. Like, and the problem is all these people think that they're the patriots. They think they're the ones saving democracy. That's what's such a mind fuck about this is like the people that are burning down democracy think they're fighting for it and yeah. that everyone else is, is burning and, it down. You're, right. Right. You're, on Wayfair, ordering you're, little kids. you're completely right. It's way worse and it's way scarier because at least the person in Afghanistan that got radicalized, like they got bombed and they're, they may have friends and family members that could have died. These people have had nothing done to them. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's my point. And the other thing is they're here. They're here. It's like we worry about like terrorists that can somehow like assimilate, you know, to to American culture and be taken in. They're not only are they here, you can fucking walk right into the Capitol and they're like, ah, oh, just a white dude, let him go. You know, like it, yeah, I it's mean, way scarier. And and I think the the things that you know we don't realize it is a terrorist next door. So you talked about uh, the guy sitting in his mom's basement. That is literally the thirty four year old shaman. The guy dressed in his, you know, Burning Man outfit. Yes. He was yeah. living in his mom's basement. And then he was living in Arizona. He owes back rent. He was this conspiracy guy um, on the streets of Phoenix, I think, like screaming nonsense all the time. And the thing is, is like, you know, all, it, what's great, what's really great is that everyone who all these conspiracy people came out and said it was Antifa. We've identified every single motherfucking person. Let me tell you, that was not Antifa. It was all radicalized MAGA conservative people that believed the stuff that were, they were writing online on Parler. I'm going to execute Mike Pence. Execute. You're going to kill the vice president and of the United States? We're not States? even talking about uh, Pelosi or AOC. It's Mike Pence. The guy that was love Mike Pence. Last week, you loved Mike Pence. Yes. And so it's him voting to certify the election and hang him. You want and to by hang the way, everyone wants to keep pointing at that it's like the poor and the disenfranchised, which there probably majority is. There was a CEO of a Chicago company out there. They just, he, they just were like, they don't know what to do. They're obviously going to fire his ass. Jason Alexander, not the beloved George Costanza, but the man that was married to Britney Spears for like 72 hours. He's yep. out there. Like these are, there are regular ass people out in these, these moments causing yep. these types of things. It's, it's, I know people continue to keep saying it's like, it's an economic thing, but it's not just an economic thing. Did you see the woman who took a private jet? Yes. <laughs> she took a private jet like from California to, to DC. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. It's because when you talk about brainwashing, here's here's what I think is going to happen. I think everyone's going to be up in arms for like 2 weeks about all this being deplatformed de because you know, if you have to go on Parler via their website and it's not as easy to kind of, you know, interact with Parler, then Maybe you continue to uh, engage. Maybe you don't. But like, you know, uh, sorry to sidebar, but um, Naval, I think, fired off on like the deplatforming thing. And I think someone else did. Uh, like uh, that guy, Balaji, um, also Jim said Biden. something. Yeah. yeah. And Alexis, uh, who is uh, founder of Reddit and uh, Serena sure. Williams' husband, he goes... Uh, what are you talking about? You can't build a bit. You can't build a successful community without Apple and Google. And then they're like, name one. He's like only fans, only fans has does billions of dollars and is not on any platform. And yeah. so, 
So I think what people are going to find out is that no one is saying you can't say whatever you want. You just can't say whatever you want on these platforms. He still is the president of the United States. He can walk into the White House press briefing room and say whatever the fuck he wants. But he's not going to do that. You know why? Because television has rules. Televisions, you can't say the shit you say on the internet on TV. You just cannot. You can't even... And here's what I don't get. To, to your example, sorry to cut you off, but like if he walked out there and said, tomorrow we're teaming up, we're going to the Capitol, the networks would turn off that speech. Yes. And nobody would freak out. No. That, it just, that's why it doesn't make any sense to me. Why are you entitled to have every social media platform as a U.S. citizen? Like, why is that this entitlement that we now feel? Don't you think it's a, if you think about the quantity of, the number of social media platforms that deplatformed uh, Trump and basically everything he represents for the most part, it was so coordinated because it basically is every platform now in the U.S. that has of any scale. Not don't only fans. Think, not only fans. But don't you think it came from the intelligence agencies? I have to believe that, don't well, you? Well, well, here's one thing I'll tell you. I think... I think everyone is like, oh, they're going to go after Apple and Amazon and Google. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Apple, Google, Amazon, you're talking about $10 trillion and the best fucking constitution lawyers on earth. They're not coming. They're not showing up with, you know, the the guy from the billboard to the Supreme Court. They're going to show up to like the entire Yale Law Department, Harvard Law Department, and they're going to say, we're going to win this motherfucking case. And by the way, any politician who fucks with us, we ain't getting our money. And I think we are a capitalistic society. Money talks, everything else doesn't. These companies, we love capitalism until it's not beneficial to you. These are free companies to do whatever they want. And yes, a, a, a Section 230 is going to evolve. It just is. We all, I don't think it's going to be the same law it was. It's going to evolve. Things will change. And if it's the intelligence agency putting pressures on platform, then they're safe because they're going to they're going to lay them up. Like Section 230 and deplatforming Trump have nothing to do with each other. No. Like that means I you don't understand what Section 230 is. Section 230 is saying you're a platform, you're absolved of responsibility of what's on there. But if you actually have a moral conscience and if the intelligence agents are telling you deplatform these guys, you do it. Yes. And by the yeah. way, I mean they're not dumb and they know that the new president in 10 days is gonna be <laughs> happy they made that move. So yeah. like, these guys yeah. aren't necessarily like the bravest, you know what I mean? It's yeah, like exactly. you gotta wait 10 days and probably a couple maybe a speech about it from Trump about big tech. And then the president loves you. Yes. And, and the Senate and the house and, and it said 50 plus percent of Americans are in favor of deplatforming Donald Trump, deplatforming plus 50%. That's majority of Americans. So it's not like this is some like fringe thought. This is what people want. And, we always do. Here's the thing. When when um, uh, I remember when uh, Nike went and did the Colin Kaepernick deal, right? They went and did the commercial. They really went out on a limb and everyone's like, oh, we're not going to buy Nike anymore. Nike made a calculated decision and said, we know this population has no impact on our business. We right. don't give a fuck about them. Yeah. Piss off. Okay. And what? Nike had a record year. N- nothing, no, no, no problem. No. All of these companies have made a calculated decision and saying, we've done that. We've, we know the polling. We know the data. This doesn't matter. In two weeks, what are you going to do? Imagine if you're like, you're like a fringe society, alt-right person. And you're so mad about this and you want to buy something. How the fuck are you going to do that? Yep. <laughs> On what? On your like Samsung, Android. I don't. I don't even know what phone. You can't go on Amazon. You can't search for anything. So you're searching on what Yahoo. Good luck finding anything on Yahoo. And then, and then, and then you want to go entertain yourself, and you can't go on any of the platforms because they're gonna, you know, kick them yeah. off. I just don't know. Is that's how hard it should be? Yes. If, you, if you try that hard to get yourself a MAGA hat, you deserve it. Yes. Wear it. Yeah. But it shouldn't be Facebook ads to your Shopify store. It shouldn't be that easy. <laughs> no. It's like, it's, it's, it's just, that's how it, this is what I don't understand. Cause everyone, com- everyone's saying this free speech shit is, is old. 
older, meaning like you knew the world before the internet. I don't understand. Everything has always been policed. Yes. People have always been like free speech has never meant you can say whatever you want, wherever you want to say it. You can't walk into a movie theater and say fire. You can't. Th- I just don't understand. I, I, I And whatever. I, I've said it over and over, but I, I just it's like these are smart people. And to me, this is the most. Maybe fun- they're not that smart. Yeah. I don't think these people are smart. I think they're just they want to like hang their hat on a statement. You know what they are? They're stubborn. By the way, in your room in the back, is that like a man with no shirt on? Who is that? Oh, Drama. That, uh, well, his name is Roger. Dirty uh, <laughs> because Hollywood's getting a little tricky. He's one of those uh, boxing uh, guys. Uh, okay, I was just like, is there like some big buff guy just hanging out in Drama's room? I yeah, thought that earlier, but I knew I was <laughs> It looks like a Donald Trump punching doll, just to be fair, from this angle. <laughs> you know what? I think I'll put a MAGA hat on it. It would be exactly that. He is kind of orange. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, I just think that these people that are screaming this, they, they, they forget that people die. They pe- forget that people's lives are at stake this week. If we give these people a platform, right? If they want to get on an e- I saw this one lady's video. She's like pumping up an email newsletter. We're doing it the old school way. Sign up for my newsletter. Awesome. Yeah, good luck. Do it that way. <laughs> yeah. You should be able to do it that way. And however many people you get to show up, if you, if you send out letters in the mail, <laughs> real newsletter, and, and people show up, good for you. But these yeah. tools, that's why I just, like they are tools that make things easier. And with that comes responsibility. It can make and, things better. It can make things worse. And what people aren't even like discussing because we're getting, this is obviously always the distraction. It's just like, does anyone want to bring up that Donald Trump just threw his hands up about the vaccine rollout after he lost? Like three to 4,000 people are dying a day because our vaccine rollout is so fucking shit poor. Like yeah. we're, the, we're the poorest standard of any other country. If you compare to all the other countries, the way they're rolling out the vaccine, we're not vaccinating anyone. And we have no rollout. You call a hospital, they have no idea when they're getting it. And he just threw up his hands. He doesn't care. I don't, this is what always drove me crazy about people that supported Donald Trump. Did you actually think he gave it? He's never cared about anyone his entire life. He doesn't care about his kids. He doesn't care about his wife. He doesn't care about anybody. And like, now you thought he would care about the common man. This guy's the epitome of elitist, coastal elite. This guy goes down the coast. From New York City to D.C. to Mar-a-Lago. He is a coastal elite shitbag. And he never... The most coastal elite person you could name thinks Donald Trump is an elitist shitbag. Yes. <laughs> like, he is the face of elitist shitbag. It's like everything's gold. Everything, it's just... It's fucking crazy. So, so Jared Kushner, obviously, it's been reported he bought a house in Miami. And that's where he's going to go post-presidency. Uh, Which tech VC fund is going to put Jared Kushner on their board. Oh, there'll be so oh, many. Partner or whatever. What, what does Peter Thiel right? do? What does Peter Thiel do? What does Peter Thiel do? And they're in there Miami. Perfect. Well, Founders fund. Sure. He'll probably be CEO. <laughs> that's for sure going to happen. <laughs> He's yeah, going to get some sort of, uh, he, I mean, I can't even imagine how many funds slash Silicon Valley assholes are going to try to hire Jared Kushner. Yeah, he won't be alienated. The people, it, it blows my mind. I think still we just had like I think still the the reaction to what really happened last week is grossly underdone. Yep. Like, it, it, the fact that this guy's still even sitting in office and people are still arguing whether or not like removing him or impeaching him is is the right thing to do, and we're still like even there's even any debate about oh well he shouldn't be deplatformed. Like it is insane you watch those videos of what really happened in there like i don't know we're, we're really crazy it feels really crazy and, and i'll tell you i'll tell you what uh so the forbes forbes uh dot com staff put out a a post and it's pretty aggressive they are saying that anyone affiliated with donald trump had Whenever they speak of anything that our magazine will cover, we are going to 
scrutinize the shit out of you guys. We are going to fact check everything. You guys are the biggest fucking liars on earth. And Forbes is like, I mean, they literally put like Sean Spicer, Kellyanne Conway, uh, Kaylee, uh, whatever, and Sidney Powell and all, and, um, Sarah Huckabee Sanders pictures and said, these people, they work anywhere. We're coming after you like straight up. They're not, the gloves are off. Dude, these guys are going to prosecute Donald Trump. I, I think federally, we just have to prosecute him. We, we cannot, we need to make sure that people understand that this behavior is not acceptable. The but same way he, he can't. I don't think you can pardon yourself. Right. I thought there was some roundabout way. Yeah, he could pardon himself from federal offenses, just not from uh, state. state level. So New York can still go after him for financial crime. I mean, Washington, D.C. can say you destroyed our city. Can't they go after yeah, him? Of course. Yeah, I think the key is New York financial crimes, right? Isn't that our best chance? Yeah, that, that's our best chance. But can't you, if you're one of the family members of the police officers who died, can't you for, file a lawsuit and charge Donald Trump with murder? Yeah, why not? Yeah, why not? I mean, it seems, yeah, I don't know. I just, I don't know. It seems like a long shot, but I just, this guy deserves, this guy deserves like the harshest punishment that America can dole out. It's like you tried to kill democracy. Yeah. People died in the name of, you, you, you destroyed a government building in the name of overthrowing a free and fair election. I don't understand how that doesn't warrant from all sides the most severe punishment that exists. And yeah. the scary part is also that he actually believes it because the smart business move would have been post-election. It was a razor-thin election. You get 71 million votes. You become the face of the Republican Party indefinitely. Yeah, I think he's crazier than we think. Yeah, yeah. that's the point. Like that that's why... Like, that's why if it was just money and like, I'm going to go start my, I'm going to go become the chairman of uh, like an alt-right Newsmax situation, all good, whatever, go do that. But this just proved it's way worse than that. It's way more dangerous than that. It's way scarier than that. And like, honestly, like if I lived, you know, if I'm working Washington DC this week and these psychos are out and about, I got a DM from someone that lives just outside of DC. And he said, there's like RVs everywhere. There's just weird people that are clearly from out of town, roaming the streets, the wear, you know, wearing Trump MAGA stuff. It's like, that's scary. Like you don't want that. And, and by the way, DC is a black city. Like it's not like, it, like what, what are the odds? And this is like as 2021, 2020 type situation that the white guy is like, Oh shit, we're scared. When you walk down the street, you see a white guy with a red hat, and you're like, holy shit. I gotta- <laughs> yeah. yeah. You cross I the street, that, clutch your purse. <laughs> yeah, I feel <laughs> that way. I feel that way, and I'm a white dude from Ohio. Like when I go to like, you know, Orange <laughs> County or wherever, and I see a, like a, one of those trucks with the Trump flag or yes. someone in the it feels <laughs> sketchy to me. It feels like, ooh, that person's yeah. crazy. Yes, I literally feel terrified when I see a big ass truck with a flag and the scary tattooed guy. I'm like looking straight ahead. I'm like, I'm not going to look at him. I'm not going to look at him. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's just funny how I think that like so many people thought like, oh, the internet, like you, you, you have more access to information than ever. It's going to connect us more than ever. It's going to educate us more than ever. And even though it has, it has also caused us to be dumber than ever and like have access to conspiracy theories and like, you're just, you're the dumbest you've ever been, this group. Yeah. Because you and I think, use the internet in the wrong way. And that's where I think the laws will evolve and change and platforms are going to be, have to be responsible for fake information on their platforms. They just have to be. And I don't know when that will happen or how that will happen, but my guess is things are going to accelerate. I mean, I thought after like the electoral college was certified, I was like, oh, Home free. It got yep. so crazy the last four days. It's insane. And by the way, the way that you know, the way that people are making it sound that there's obviously a handful of events. It's you know, it's like a four day weekend. Got the seventeenth, the nineteenth, the twentieth, yep. the twenty first. It's like a week long of festivities. There's Coachella. 
Yes, it is. it is literally. That's what I said that last episode. I thought it felt like Coachella for them. And I think it for them. And, and that's why, like, you know, I've heard many points about it being like the disenfranchised, you know, economic uh, left out person. But we keep hearing stories of like pretty well to do people showing up in the protest and saying, let's go. There's yeah. not it's not all poor people out there. No. Yeah, I think no, no. I think that's important. Yeah. So but here's something to think about. So we have two extremes of the way we run society. China where you have no rights. America where you have unlimited rights. I would have never said this in my life until the pandemic happened and the way we've responded in a post-Trump world and now we just saw the capital breach. I I mean, I can't even believe I'm even saying this. I'm like, are are we do we have too many rights in the country? <laughs> like we don't have order. It's chaos. Uh, it's be shut I, down. Rights on social media. That's the biggest problem. It's social media. Like where else? If, okay, take take social media and the ability that you can just do anything at any time out of it. Where else? Because I agree with you. I totally agree with you, and it feels so weird and counterintuitive to say and whatever. But like, where else are too many rights really a problem? It's only the fact that you can do whatever you want, however you want, on the internet. Yeah, and I think if you think about it like this, Anand, is imagine saying what you say and acting like the way you act on the internet, but in real life. What percentage of people actually do that? That number becomes extremely tiny really, really, really quick. Whereas there's tens of millions of people on the internet saying the craziest shit. You see them in person, it's not acceptable socially, right? You just wouldn't do it. So it's okay. And so even if the person, your neighbor is a crazy psycho racist, they just wouldn't say it to your face, but they get a keyboard and they're just like. Because yeah. if you think about it, we're almost, uh, what are, we're almost a year into the pandemic, right? March is when yeah. it started in the U.S. in full force. And you can argue when it actually came to the U.S. So we're talking, we had zero way of handling a pandemic. And our economy is still shut down. The country's effectively, like, for the most part, shut down. You, I know you have your Miamis and Florida, whatever. And then on top of that, the capital just got breached. So where are we as a society? Is this the lowest point of American society and modern American society? Let's take away, like, slavery civil and war, civil yeah. rights. Like, post-civil rights, a post-civil rights America, this is the worst, Right. Well, not yeah. according to that stock market on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think, um, think morale-wise, absolutely. And the other thing to your point that I wanted to say was like, we don't have that many rights in real life. Meaning like, of course, America is like the freest or whatever, but like go to a restaurant, go anywhere without a mask, <laughs> um, go have even a protest and the next night you have a curfew. Like yeah. you have a protest in LA, it's like, oh, you have freedom of speech. And then the next right. night it's like 6 p.m. curfew. You know, like we <laughs> shut all of these things down in real life. It's just that on the internet, for some reason, that's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I can I can schedule a riot if I want. How dare you ban me? Like it's too many just, Navals. What'd you say? Too many Navals that think the that think they're playing three dimensional chess with society. Oh, I don't get it. Because I love Naval. I just all I can imagine is like he blew up this year and now he's just hunting for sound bites or something. <laughs> yeah. He he yeah, he honestly looked really as far as I'm concerned, he's I'm done with him. Like I can't <laughs> listen to him. I can't listen to him anymore. Like you you, you it, all this philosophy you've read and you have no common sense. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, still like you, you know, like I don't like that thing, but I like the other things. I'll, I'll give you a, you know. You yeah, I mean, up. he can. Re- and by the way, I'm all about forgiving. If he comes out and says, I misread the situation, then I'm OK with it. I just don't like these very influential people just doing one line quotes to get a bunch of retweets, but not backing up a fucking thing they say and, and yeah. not even addressing what's really the problem in our society. Cause it's not black and white. I'm sorry. It's not that simple. Like they, they wanted to everything to be like, Oh, it's everyone gets to say whatever they want, whenever they want. But guess what? Not when people die, you don't get to say whatever you want. I mean, yeah, the only, I go ahead. Go ahead. I was like, the only near term solution is you stop the algorithm and make everything chronological. I don't see that. That's not censorship. 
That's not uh, any infliction of rights. It's just making big tech companies not make as much money. I know Chamath is the only one that's been like screaming that from the mountaintop, but he's right. But here's what I don't get. If you killed the algorithm, I totally agree. And then you simply came out with a, what is acceptable on our platform? And it included any speech inciting violence, inciting a riot, any of that. And then you police that. I, I, to me, it's that easy to make a massive shift. I mean, even even take it one step even below the 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 latter is like hate speech. Hate speech is not allowed anywhere except the internet. We allow yeah. hate speech on the internet. You you're allowed to say whatever you want. And you can't say that on television, right? Like you can't take a billboard with a racial slur. No, you can't do anything. But on the internet, if you say you can't say the you know N word, you'll say, "Oh, free speech." I mean, come on. It's like, even like I was thinking that on into your point too. Is like you couldn't even screw a racial slur. Of course you couldn't. But you couldn't even if you said, "I want to take out billboards all over the city and say January seventeenth." <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Like most, most businesses would say, no, we're not going to let you do that on our billboard. Yeah. But we don't go scream free speech. No. Like I, you know, anyway. Well, what happens on the inauguration? Like uh, uh, Donald said he's not going. Pence is, Pence Pence is going. going. Pence is wow. going. I, I think Pence and all these other folks are like, uh, we still have a career we still need to make a living. We still want to leave a lasting legacy. Like we got to bail on this guy. And now that he's been deplatformed, no matter what, he completely now is a fringe guy, right? Like you're, you're Alex Jones. You, you know, you're, that's what he is. Donald Trump is Alex Jones at yeah. best. Alex Jones is very good at what he does. I don't think Donald Trump is going to show up physically like how Alex Jones would show up to like a restaurant to cause get publicity. So I think that, I think, you know, and these politicians, they're just, this is their career. They're not going to blow their career to, to help this idiot. Yeah, I agree. It feels, like a, it feels like a bigger breakup than Kanye and Kim, like seeing uh, Mike Pence and Donald Trump, like, break up. Apparently they haven't spoken. Oh, for sure. I'm sure Pence won't even take his call, if I had to guess. No, I think Pence is old school and he'd probably sit down and have a conversation. Donald Trump is just a bitch. He's yeah. a bitch. Yeah. He's the definition of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. That's wild. He just is. He's just like the definition of like a grown man, like, like little bitch, but, but is looked so, at. So at this point, we, so now we're like a, a handful of days removed from the Capitol breach and now that all the deplatform. I had said 61 of the 71 million would still uh, vote, I think, four days ago for Trump. I think it's a lot lower now. What do you oh, guys yeah. think? I, I think yeah, you said I think 61. It, if you said 61, I think it's down to 45. Yeah, yeah. I, think it, I think it's like 30, which it would be like 10% of the country. What is that? Not even? And I think from here, I think from here it falls quick. <laughs> but let's just say it's in the window of 30 to 45 and I think over the next month, it falls off a cliff. What yeah, do you think you the can't... rationale is of the non-radicalized Trump supporter that's not about taxes? Free what speech. is the rationale of a non-radicalized Trump supporter that's not about taxes? Um, law and order? Yeah. I mean, there's no law. There's no order. They just, <laughs> just broke down the most sacred building in our country. <laughs> Yeah, also true. I, I think you're probably lo- racism. I mean, I look, I think that there are, like, I think there's a large group that's like, I think there is a very large group that is racist, but would never, like, truly, truly in their mind doesn't even know it. Right. Like, I think that there's a big group that just has a bias and they just like the way it feels when things are a little more white or they just like the idea of, yeah, America being great again, or they feel a little uneasy. Like, I, I don't know. I, I think that that exists. And I think there's something about like stable and familiar with the whole Trump thing. That's like a little up in the air with Kamala. Mm, not sure yeah. about that. I didn't, I didn't it sounds know like it. Kabbalah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sketchy. Not sure about it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, um, yeah, I uh, Dominion has a lawsuit too now. <laughs> 
So uh, it's one of the voting companies that uh, in Atlanta that um, Trump was so adamant about that their voting machines were faulty. And so these guys, so they're called Dominion Voting Systems, and all these conspiracies were filed. So they sued Sidney Powell. This is the lawyer for Trump. In, this, in the Georgia situation. She's, she's the worst. She sued them. No, they sued her, sorry, for $1.3 billion in damages. So they're pretty much trying to bankrupt her. <laughs> I mean, that is great. Can you imagine the legal downpour that's about to come to Donald Trump? And who the only people that can finance this will be foreign entities, right? Like no American businessman is going to sit there and back Donald Trump and risk losing, getting tangled up in this situation. Yeah, yeah I think I think it's you know to the point where we're talking about uh, Jared Kushner, and he's a young dude. I think he's not even forty yet, and he obviously has tons of aspiration in business. When he starts to distance himself, what does Ivanka do? Because he's going to have to. Yeah, you can't. Wait, well, I guess when they go visit him in uh, uh, Rikers, you know, I don't know if the whole family's coming. Good I question. I think we might be able to talk about the Trump family for the rest of our lives. Oh, for sure. Like, meaning not like old stories. I mean, like there will be news. It'll be like, where, yes. did, where did they end up? How does Ivanka and Jared, where, you know, like. I just I'm so excited for the books and the documentaries about what was really going on. Oh yeah. Because you know the same way you're gonna get all the lawsuits, everyone's gonna feel real comfortable to start sharing the truth once this guy doesn't have any power anymore. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Especially when they know he's gonna get prosecuted or he can't run off if he if they can disqualify him from future elections, it is a wrap. That's when Uh, all the information is gonna come out. (laughs) I cannot wait. Especially if you have no platform, it's over. If he has no platform, he's disqualified. It's going to just open the floodgates. I think everyone's still a little too sketch to like really talk about it because you don't know this guy's too much of a loose cannon. If I mean, if, I, if the platforms continue this ban, he has no shot at twenty twenty four. He can't run. Yeah, because you can't reach anyone. Yeah, yeah, you're too irrelevant. It's it's worse than impeachment. Yeah. Getting kicked off a platform when you're an influencer, you're a rap. You're a rap. It, it's it's going to show. I don't. I think there's a large group that didn't realize how much power Twitter was giving him, and they're going to see that over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, agreed. Um, okay, can we shift into Bitcoin? Is there anything else we want to talk about? Anything else we missed? No. Nah. Okay, Bitcoin. On and one to ask you. Um, I saw this article about that there's like a, a Bitcoin is heavily concentrated to the, you know, the Bitcoin whales um, yeah. they keep talking about. And apparently with this whole um, sort of explosion recently, it's continuing to sort of build with a, with a small group. Can you explain that to, to me? Yeah. So I, I think it, it's true and not true because um, there are a lot of large transactions that happen off chain. So right now you can go buy $10 billion a day, 10 to $20 billion a day of Bitcoin. And the market cap's only 650 billion, I think at the time right now off chain, meaning it's literally private key to private key. And that way it doesn't move the actual market of the price. So if you were to go on an exchange and say, I want $10 billion of Bitcoin. Yeah. It'll go crazy. I rock it. Right. So it's a little misleading because you truly don't know who owns the coins. Um, so these are wallets that are on chain that you can see how it's concentrated. And yeah. Well, let's share that data. Let's share that data. Because on, on, on wallets that, uh, of exchanges, it said that 2% of people controlled 92% of Bitcoin. Yeah. So yeah, look, that's the one. Yeah. And, and to explain it, like if you're BlackRock and you want a Bitcoin exposure – you're not going on Coinbase and saying, hey, I need $50 billion of Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. You're not just like putting the buy button, $50 billion, please. Yeah. <laughs> There's ways to do these large transactions without uh, uh, moving the markets. And 
so yeah, obviously the whales that owned a majority at two thousand dollars a coin. Now that it's forty thousand, yeah, you're going to have a larger share of uh, of uh, mark or percentage, technically. But um, yeah, I think the other interesting thing it said like some crazy number like ninety percent or seventy percent. I got to read it again. Own approximately 0.01 of Bitcoin, which I actually think is pretty cool. That means that like there's a lot of like regular people that own like whatever 0.01 is worth now. I don't know, a few hundred bucks or something like that um, of Bitcoin. So I think there is this uh, very similar to, I would put it like real estate where like there's a lot of regular people that own maybe their home or they own an investment property or whatever it is, they're getting their exposure in cryptocurrency like they do everything else in the market. And I think, I think that's why it's, people are so excited about it, um, what's going on in crypto. Uh, the last 24 hours, though, seemed like a wild ride. It seems like it's been whipsawing up and back, back and forth. Someone's, if you could spend all day trading crypto, it's fun. There's so much action. Yeah, what's yeah. it at? Let me see. I think it's like 37 now. I think the highest, it's at 38. 38. Uh, 38, um, 325. I think it got close to 42,000 and then dipped. Yeah. But that's just a function of, I mean, it's a it's a volatile asset and it's going to yeah. continue to do these kind of swings. So, yeah. I, I mean, I think timing the market's the dumbest thing to try to do. You either yeah. believe in it or you don't. So if you believe in it, just buy it and don't look at it or don't buy it. I'll tell you what's scary that I think uh, the next thing we need to start banning. Here's the problem with unregulated assets. I've never really gone on YouTube and searched Bitcoin. I did today, this morning, last night. Holy shit. The things that like, there's like 12 year old kids predicting the price of Bitcoin. I literally tell you, Today, you're going to make 75%. Tomorrow, you're going to lose 25%. I mean, like, there's nonsense. Just compl- they're just lying. It's like, it's so scary. And, 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 and when I talk about unregulated, I'm talking baseball cards, Pokemon yeah. cards, oh, art. Yeah. These are all like, you know, I th- we know art is bullshit. Why is art bullshit? Because it's just like in the eyes of the beholder, right? Like, it's just, and the same thing with baseball cards. It's the same thing with crypto and like, I think what's going to like eventually as, you know, people like Coinbase kind of professionalize in the, in the eyes of like larger financial institutions, there needs to be some basic like ground rules because what people are saying on YouTube and then kids are going to, I mean, it's just fucking insane. The stuff you should, you should TikTok. TikTok. I, know, I don't crazy, I feel like. I haven't seen TikTok crypto videos. Maybe I'll go do that tonight. But I went on YouTube and searched Bitcoin and I was like, oh my God, these kids haven't gone through puberty. And they're literally telling people Bitcoin is going to be at 5 million by 2022. I was like, and this is how we get there. And it's just like nonsense. <laughs> yep. Yep. It's fucking absurd. And that's uh, on, I feel like on TikTok, it's even worse worse because you only have, you know, 60 seconds to get it all out. So. <laughs> so you have to say the craziest shit as quickly as possible. Exactly. Oh, oh my God. Um, and then what about, th- this looks like a good uh, next big buy. What about uh, Oatly? I want to be an oat milk. Uh, you know, I want to get rich off oat milk. That'd be my preference. So Oatly is... Oatly, I've been a fan of uh, from a product standpoint, and I started following it, I think, whenever I first saw it. Uh, I think I saw some billboards in LA, and we went to the grocery store and bought it maybe a year or two ago. And they're expected to do $400 million in 2020, double what they did in 2019. They're in every Starbucks now in America. Oatly is effectively oat milk, which uh, for environmental reasons, almond milk uses a shitload of water to create. So technically energy efficient and oat milk though has a lot more sugar in it. Um, that's kind of the caveat to it. But the most amazing thing about Oatly, there was a CEO that came in years ago. This brand had been around for a while and he just redid their packaging and their business exploded. Oatly has incredible packaging. It's the same content, same exact product. He just said, this does not, fit today's customer. 
and they, I forgot, it was like maybe the hustle or one of those websites did a breakdown of it. You should Google and look it up. But what their packaging did for their entire business is an incredible case study because you just saw like he was, and, and the CEO, I think he's Swedish, talks about how important consumer packaging is in this industry. And it, that was such a huge part of their success. Sure, there was this whole move to alternative milks, but almond milk's been around forever, you know? And I'm assuming oat milk had been around forever, but this packaging changed and Oatly became this like friendly packaging in, in the alternative milk space. So I'm, I'm like every other IPO. I mean, this falls in the beyond meat category. So food alternative type stuff. Um, I'm sure it'll do well. I mean, the only IPO that I've seen not do well is Wish, which I actually think is a horrible company. So it's, yeah. at least if the company does not, if it smells like shit, you get treated like it. <laughs> yeah, at least they're on the Lakers jerseys. What? Wish. Wish. That's so you think the stock should go up based on that? You should Why go on TikTok. You should go on TikTok. LeBron James <laughs> and Anthony Davis will make Wish a five hundred billion dollar. <laughs> <laughs> oh Did you God. know this marketplace is the only marketplace that LeBron James currently <laughs> endorses? <laughs> um, okay, moving on. Did you guys <laughs> see <laughs> that we I don't understand this headline. Mm -hmm. It says that the U.S. economy lost 140,000 jobs in December. So okay. not good. We're going the wrong direction. Uh, pandemic still having a big impact. The part that I don't get is it says all of them were held by women. <laughs> so what was happening was last week, every company just called everyone to their staff and goes, look to the woman to the left of you, look to the woman to the right of you, get the fuck out of here. Seriously. I don't, I don't understand the biggest like, assault on the female work population in the history of the world. I yeah. don't get this at all. It's, it's certainly not even possible. And the fact that CNN Business is like posting this. Everyone posted it. I looked it up on so many sites and everyone is saying that th this particular metric is real. It says that like the, like men gained like 13,000 jobs or something. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what? And it feels like a there's like a, a ultra ultra like feminist at CNN business that's like no, like it's skewing. I mean, there, it's just how is it possible? How is it possible that they said, all right, we got to clear out the workforce. Tom, you get to stay. Steve, all good. Rebecca, Stephanie, Jamie, <laughs> Alyssa, <laughs> you're all out of here. I, and by the way, we know that we pay you 81 cents on the dollar and we make more money off of you, but you're all gone. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, there's obviously a gender pay gap. It would be smarter to fire the males versus the females. Yes. Everybody so knows you should know, fire the males. <laughs> Did that happen on Parlor? Where'd that happen? Who who was all on the same page that we're all only firing women this this month? <laughs> I was trying to think of like what industry, the only industry I th I could think of that may have affected this was seasonal retail jobs. So like you know, retailers hire a surge of people, and maybe you can argue in a portion of retail is predominantly women. And that that's why it's reflecting that. But other than that, it's literally like I call up everyone in the company and just everyone who uses that bathroom, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> they just might as well have locked the bathroom and said you're out. <laughs> yeah, the women's bathroom just led to the parking lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just can't believe this. I agree. I don't understand it. Everyone's reporting it. I, I I'm really curious to see because now the data doesn't make sense to me. Was I've heard I've read this a lot that women were adversely affected to the pandemic versus men in terms of layoffs, and I was trying to think of what jobs that could have been. I'm guessing that's like retail, or because most corporate jobs didn't have the same kind of movement that like. Yeah, I just don't know. I, I don't know. I'm very curious about this. Okay. Well, we'll see. It just feels like a like a spinning words about as much as you possibly can but well you know if you're if you're a woman that listens to this podcast and got laid off last week let us know let us know yeah please um 
Okay, next up is we've had a lot of complaints about Gavin Newsom. I think everyone has. Um, and California in general has been catching a lot of heat. But it looks like financially <laughs> uh, we're, we're being praised. So yes. his French Laundry, maybe French Laundry Newsom, you know, was having big, uh, big money talk there at French Laundry. And, and he knows what he's doing. I'm going to give zero credit to any politician in the state of California for this. It is a pure reflection of stock market and where those companies are based and the tax revenue collected off those companies. So yeah. Apple based in California, Facebook based in California. I mean, go down the list of how many big ass companies. Obviously new IPOs like yeah. DoorDash, Airbnb, and that's where the money's coming from. It has nothing to do with Newsom. And if yeah. he takes credit for it, um, obviously he's going to. So yeah. I mean, I'm not saying if. He, yeah. I mean, he, he just shouldn't be, and it's it's just uh, complete well, bullshit. He, but, here's uh, the thing. Uh, here's the thing. How he, how he shut down those restaurants. Yeah, and, and I think California really has to figure out how it wants to position itself for the future. But because, isn't that, that's actually it's actually scary if you think about it that the deficit wasn't nearly what they thought because it's so the wealth is so concentrated in a handful of companies and one industry, particularly technology, but the state is filled with just tens and hundreds of thousands of small businesses that are all cratered. So yeah. the wealth is no reflection of what's actually going on in the state. And that's yeah. actually a really big problem. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. Um, okay. Final story. This one also seems crazy, but for good reason. Um, unlike the all women in the world have been fired thing. Um, they're saying that not one single police officer in Newark, New Jersey, on that specific um, department, fired their gun in 2020. Insane. Insane. And they credit it. I mean, this is, this is they credit it to de-escalation training and new, you know, tactics and protocols that they put in place. Um, but not one, not one gu- shot fired in Newark. And, which, like, Newark isn't, you know, Newark sketch. Yeah. And, and, and by the way, their crime rate down 6%, uh, gun violence down, I think 7%. They obviously dealt with all the BLM protests over the, you know, in June, summer was violent all over the country in general. And they didn't fire. This just shows you that if you put the effort and work in, public, you know, government can be done right. Police can be done right. Everything can be done right. It's just work. Like someone had to sit and come up with the de-escalation training program. Then they had to fund it. And then they need to get buy-in from the police officers. I'm guessing New Newark Police Department uh, employees probably feel safer that they don't have to – pull out their pistol and shoot people like, yeah. because you know, it, despite maybe the, whatever the crime rates in that, in that city are just knowing that like that is not becoming a part of normal society. Then if you don't shoot, they ain't going to shoot you back either. Right. It's yeah. just like, it just shows that like, there's so many solutions out there that can be implemented that can change our society on so many levels. And, you know, fucking amazing what Newark's doing. Like, and, and like, I, I don't know if this is correlated, but I'd assume DeRay McKesson's eight can't wait and all of his efforts uh, influenced the Newark Police Department because he's the only one with the data that's actually aggregated all police department data on how to de-escalate violence within police and who they patrol. So my guess is he had a hand in this. Yeah, I hope so. That's great. Well, there's some good news. There's some new year, new us. Yeah. yeah. I want to get it. Eh? Yeah. Hey, not so bad after all, eh? <laughs> there were more gun, gun uh, shots fired inside of the U.S. Capitol than in all of Newark, New Jersey. <laughs> in 2020. Yeah. This just in 2021. Uh, okay. What, uh, we got any shout outs? Tim, what do you got? Yeah, we got some shout outs. Um, are you getting tricked uh, again? Be careful, man. Make sure you yeah. read those names really, really Dixon close. Dixon ass? You got us with Dixon ass? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's what happens. This is a shout out 
from Satoshi Nakamoto. And okay, stop, <laughs> stop. Do you know who that is? I, I don't, but I, I recognize that that's not who this person is. <laughs> Satoshi uh, is the guy who created Bitcoin that no one knows who he is. Is this like a game that the listeners are doing? Like, how do I- <laughs> <laughs> well, here, here, here. So he begins it by saying, hello, if you didn't know it by now, I am both Harry Sack and Dixon Ass. <laughs> You can verify each week with the incognito email I've been using. I knew Tim would fall for the first nickname because he probably doesn't even know what a hairy sack is thanks to Manscaped. (laughs) First off, I know Chamath is brown. I thought Anand would understand the joke because the blank is the white version of Tyler Hero is an NBA fan joke. Second, Drama Freddy B a skydiving is the contest we need in 2021. If we're not going to get SSL, we at least deserve that. <laughs> <laughs> so besides that, today's question of the day is for D. Uh, when are we getting that comprehensive review of the Apple headphones? They're luxurious, but I would be too scared to wear them in LA. Maybe in Miami instead. You know, right after I talked about it, I went on the Apple site and they were sold out. And so I haven't checked back since. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, why not? I, I think these AirPod Pros are destroying my hearing. They're, the Apple headphones are meant to hurt you, I think. They're just yeah. the shape, everything about them, I think, is designed to hurt you. Big tech is ruining my life. <laughs> Deep <laughs> <laughs> All right, one more shout out from Johnny Bubbles uh, in Phoenix, Arizona. Says, I want to shout out the awesome group chat team. Yes, that includes Pete. You guys have added so much value to my life, and this shout out does not do it justice. Keep up the great work. Let's get uh, some longer episodes in 2021. Thank you, Drama D, Anon, Pete, Tim, and Chrissy, your longtime supporter. Johnny Bubbles official, shameless plug. That's his Instagram handle. Okay, Johnny Bubbles. Did you call me Chrissy, or did I read that wrong? No, no, no. Talking about Chrissy. Talking about Chrissy. <laughs> oh, Chrissy from our team. Uh. <laughs> Although he did spell Anon, A N O N. Q Anon. Q Anon, yeah. That's right. yeah. Uh, so I think uh, we should all be billionaires because we figured out who Satoshi is. Yeah, yeah. and he, he's a just a guy. casual listener. Yeah. <laughs> also goes by Harry Sack and Tinson Ass or whatever. <laughs> Dixon Ass. <laughs> Okay, is that it? What else? Is that it? That's it. Okay. All right, guys. Well, listen, it feels good to uh, wrap up this episode knowing that I don't have to watch my temperature for the next three days. Yeah. And uh, we're, we're nice and safe. So hopefully uh, we can stay the, say the same uh, after this week. It's gonna, there's going to be a lot to, to chat about leading up to this uh, inauguration, I feel like. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a wild week. We're here. All right. Uh, See you guys. Godspeed. Bye-bye.